finals of the Champions League for the first time in 16 years. Talk about times changing. Ten years, for the last 10 years, it could have been Barcelona, Manchester United, Real Madrid. But now it is Frankfurt, West Ham, Villarreal who are leading the pack. And then we've got the usual suspects of Liverpool and Manchester City. But now, let's go ahead and shift gears and talk about some of the things that will be coming your way. And we'll be kicking off with the FA Cup semi-finals that will be coming your way this afternoon. And Eric is still here with me. And also, Tyrus is still here with me. And so far, they are still having fun here. They are talking about <laughs> how Manchester United will make it in the next two. two <laughs> yeah. being, hopeful. <laughs> being hopeful for the future and what the future holds for these teams. But let's talk about the FA Cup that is coming this afternoon. It's actually a rematch of the game that we watched in the Premier League, which came at the end of 2-2. Two, two. But now Manchester City again versus Liverpool. How do you see that match going? <laughs> <laughs> the other one Int came with interesting that. time. You see, <laughs> these teams, uh, this is where they have played twice. Yes. Uh, in the Premier League. <laughs> Both uh, cases have ended 2-2. Two, two. Yes. Two old draw. Mm -hmm. First leg goes 2-2. Two, two, second yes. leg goes 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. That, that, that gives you a glimpse of what we are going to expect. Mm -hmm. We are going to expect goals. Yes. We are going to expect fireworks today. Mm -hmm. Because again, uh, uh, um, this is a realistic chance. Of, mm -hmm. of winning a trophy, yes. Uh, because if they make it to the to the to the final, then chances are one of these two teams will lift it. Mm -hmm. So we are going to see goals today, yeah. and uh, I, I believe we want to see a repeat of what we saw last weekend, mm -hmm. last Sunday. Uh, oh. Fireworks coming in. Of course, we expect uh, uh, being an FA game, and also having played in midweek. They played on Sunday. They played in midweek. We're expecting some changes to be made in both yes. teams. But I, I'm sure if you look at the setup of uh, the two teams, uh, we'll see more changes coming into the Man City game because of the nature of the coach. He's going to, 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 to move around players. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not expecting very many changes uh, in, in the Liverpool uh, team because Klopp has a few people he trusts. So yes. he may bring in two, three attackers, uh, two, three changes, but they, we don't see an overhaul. But all in all, uh, we have two managers who play attacking football in yes. different ways. Because Pep plays attacking football where yes. he plays, uh, pass your way into the attack. When it comes to, to, to Liverpool, they play the heavy metal football. Yes. Long passes into the space and uh, they, they, they hit you very fast mm -hmm. and they play high speed football. When it comes to, now it is the last stages of these competitions because you've got a chance to win double now, you've got a chance to win a treble now, you've got a chance to win a quadruple now. Mentally, how are these guys prepared? Because you look at Manchester City, they went to war against Atletico Madrid for them to come on top. They are heading against to another Normandy against uh, Liverpool. Mentally, how are these players going to be prepared for such a clash? Uh, it's just another day in paradise for them. <laughs> they are used to it. That's a typical <laughs> footballer season. <laughs> lots and lots of football, lots and lots of trophies to fight for. And lots and lots of reason to try and up your stakes, especially as a World Cup, which is due this year, draws ever so closer. Yes. So, ultimately, I think psychologically, they're going to be in a good place. The, the only thing that could catch up with them a bit, if not a lot, is the fatigue. Because mm -hmm. they've had lots and lots of football yes. and lots and lots of traveling that comes with it. And now there's more traveling. They are moving from the northeast of England, going to play at London's Wem Wembley Stadium. That's more traveling, more time away from your loved ones. Mm -hmm. But other than that, as Eric said, expect a lot of entertainment, just like mm -hmm. we were entertained last weekend. Yeah. This game is going to be proper, just like last weekend's game was proper. You wouldn't have walked away from watching that match feeling disappointed because of lack of entertainment. Maybe the result would have disappointed you if you were partisan, but in terms of entertainment, it's off the edge type of soccer. And that's really what you want. Yeah. And this is FA Cup, man. It's very, very prestigious. A lot of people think the FA Cup has lost its prestige. Man, they're wrong. It's like the World Cup of England domestically. Yes. If you put aside the English Premier League. 
So I think stakes are going to be very, very high. At some point, there might be tension nearing, bordering on fracas amongst the players because they all want to do it and they are also very tired, fatigued by lots and lots of football. This is a, a must watch. Talking about that and everything, well, you talked about the changes that we might be expecting this afternoon coming on to this game. I understand that like, Kyle Walker might be injured from the game against Atletico Madrid. Cancelo also, and there's also fatigue, the likes of Ke Kevin De Bruyne and all that. What, what, what kind of the major changes will you think from the Manchester City point of view? I think the Manchester City, maybe uh, Kyle Walker's absence will have to bring in somebody else. We have, uh, uh, he has a tendency also not to start with a recognized striker. Yes. I think he'll still go do that today. And uh, he's going to crowd his midfield so that uh, he keeps uh, Madrid and uh, Liverpool out of his midfield. Yes. But on this one, I think my gut is that Liverpool will carry the day. <laughs> yes. However much I hate yeah, them. Me too. Uh, yeah. Simply because one... Uh, Manchester City were kicked and bruised in midweek by Atletico. Atletico did a lot of damage to them. Yes. Uh, look at you. So what they did to feel for them? <laughs> they, mm. they, they they brought in fear. Yes. Uh, to them and uh, today uh, they may not be on top of their game. Yeah. Uh, Liverpool uh, has has a, has, a, has a compact way of playing. Is is it another tactic that Klopp can employ to? Be on the faces of Manchester. Oh City. yes, he will be on the faces yeah. of Manchester. You see, yeah. uh, Ma Liverpool plays a little bit more physical as yes. compared. If you look at these two teams, mm -hmm. Liverpool is going to come in the heavy metal. They're going to bang them. They're going to come, and uh, Liverpool will come off the blocks flying. Yes. Because remember, last Sunday, they gave Manchester City a chance to mm. score first. Mm -hmm. Today, I don't think uh, Klopp is going to repeat that uh, mistake. He's yes. going to instruct his players to just come take the game to Man City from mm -hmm. the word go and you yeah. know when you take the game to man city at least uh, the game becomes more interesting because they have to respond in kind also mm -hmm. <laughs> they have to respond yeah. in kind and and they're uh, playing on neutral ground on neutral ground Wem uh, wembley. wembley last yeah. time liverpool were playing away at city yeah. and it sort of put them in in a tense position yes. mm -hmm. if if the, that game was in anfield I think Liverpool may just have walked away with the game. Although City dominated it, but yes. they were dominating because they're at home. Mm -hmm. That advantage. This one is neutral. Yeah. Wembley is 50-50. I think Liverpool might just have the last laugh. Not at, maybe at least with a margin of one goal. Yes. But I think Liverpool will have the last laugh. And in the other game, I think... Let me just be very politically incorrect. <laughs> I think Crystal Palace will win. <laughs> well, that is the uh, game that you are going to talk about. Talk about a coach who has come in to Crystal Palace, actually not even Crystal Palace, to the Premier League. He's doing his job without people noticing, but his team is actually working wonders. And that is Patrick Vieira with Crystal Palace. And he's going against it. So far, how do you rate... Uh, Patrick Vieira and Crystal Palace, uh, just the whole season so far. I think he's successful because facts don't lie, my yeah. brother. Uh, 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 if you look at right now, the points they, are, they have garnered is equal to the points they garnered last season. Yes. And they still have eight games to spare. So that shows you yes. what a brilliant job this guy has done. Mm -hmm. Because if, if, if they have equal the points they garnered the whole of last season, mm -hmm. yes. and they still have eight points to spare, eight points can easily result into 24 points yes. <laughs> maximum. Uh, they, they're expecting 10 more points mm -hmm. on, the, on, the, on the lower side uh, from the eight points. Because the eight games, let's assume they win two. <laughs> yes. You see, those they they expected at least ten points, so they they, they, they will have really improved. So I, I'm sure when we are rating him, he's done a brilliant job. And he's actually at the top half of the table. He's at the top half of the table. Mm -hmm. You know, when when he beat Arsenal, <laughs> a friend mm -hmm. of mine uh, commented uh, yes. <laughs> something uh, that is uh, said uh, twelve, I think eleven or ten black strong black men harassing <laughs> a few mzungus on the field <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> when he was talking about the likes of uh, Zaha versus Smith Rowe, you know, mm -hmm. that yes. he, he's galvanized his team around him. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you see, at a coach, uh, and uh, we were talking about Atletico off the record, a yes. coach, his playing PDS days will reflect his coaching style. Yes. Vieira's playing days, he was a combative midfielder. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's done into that team. Uh -huh. What they lack in flair, yes. they substitute with energy. Mm 
mm-hmm. they substitute with endurance yes. and they substitute with aggressiveness uh-huh. if you look at the game against arsenal they yes. had the energy mm-hmm. they had the endurance and they were aggressive and you know, Ayu was done and buried did nobody yes. talk about knew he, he scored a brilliant goal in that yes game. So he's going to go against Chelsea and he's going to cause Chelsea problems. And there's one coach actually who has managed to pick a point from Manchester City. Yes. Actually, two points two from points. Manchester City. So this is four against Arsenal. And you know, four against the plan Arsenal. I made, and you know, Jimmy Wayaki, my nephew, also comes here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he sent me a WhatsApp message. Ali in the season, who do you think will be the first coach to be sacked this season? I said, ah, Patrick Vieira. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought it was Patrick Vieira. <laughs> I thought Vieira would we'll go. Like it. Yeah. No, no, yes. no, he has what but he But man, the guy is smooth. Yeah, he he's knows smooth, what he's, he's up to. Yeah. He knows what he's doing. I watched him on Instagram from his first training session, his second training session. Mm. I still didn't rate him. Mm. But let me tell you, my heart is off. Patrick Vieira. If if you look at most of the coaching, the coaches in football, those who really excel, most of them are normally midfielders. Why do I say midfielders or uh, somebody who plays in the midfield role, either as 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 an attacking midfielder or a defensive midfielder? Most of the time, in any team, look at Ateta, look at Vieira, look at Xavi, look at Guardiola, look at Lampard. Those are the guys who, in any team, who enforce the tactics of the coach on the field. Yes, yeah. the coach passes instructions through them. These are the guys who pull the strings in the field. The midfielder will do that because he has to coordinate between the defense and, and the, the attack. attack. So they have a good footballing mind. But there's a 20% in me that's saying next season yes, is yeah. Patrick Vieira's real litmus test. Yes. Uh-huh. So that's when he'll really prove himself. Mm. I don't know. There's mm. something telling I'm a bit skeptical. Just uh, 20%. And also, uh, uh, what, what, what we can be asking also is that Chelsea, having lost to Real Madrid, everybody talks about when you lose a game, you need to make a comeback. You need a response. You yes, need yes, a response. Yes, yes, yes. But do you see a response in the FA Cup? It will be a tough game. What I can say, it will be a tough game. But again, uh, we can under- we cannot underestimate Tuchel because I, I, I've, I've, I've followed him. He's yeah. not the kind of manager who makes a mistake twice. <laughs> because look at the game, the first leg against Real Madrid. He, he, he started the game sluggishly. He, he conceded three. Mm-hmm. When he came now, the second leg, he didn't start sluggishly. He, yes. he was up 3-0. <laughs> so yeah. you see, he's a coach who learns and uh, he, has, uh, he has players who are also willing to fight for him. So here, we are going to see a combative semi-final. Yeah. We are going to see a tough game. And uh, it can go either way. And it's a derby. It's also a derby. Yeah, it's also a derby. Like the other one. Uh, but I, I'll put my money on Chelsea yes. on this one. Well, Eric Aganya and Tyra Soyaki here on the touchline. I'm Robert Osoro. It is the touchline at Mirumbi Osoro, at Titi Oyaki, and at Eric Aganya. Is where you can find us on Twitter and Facebook and talk to us on matters that are happening when it comes to sports. A big weekend also this afternoon. Before we go to the fixtures and talk everything that is happening in the fixtures, Nemanja Matic has actually said, this is my last season at Manchester United. I need to pave the way for the young guys. Brilliant idea. Mm. Brilliant idea Mm -hmm. because uh, uh, as much as I have massive respect for the guy, Mm -hmm. he's a a left-footed guy who plays in the the center of the park. Let us not forget what he did for Chelsea. That Mm -hmm. season under Mourinho that they won the the, the Premier League. Yes. Uh, He was very instrumental. Mourinho's comeback season. Mourinho's comeback season. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's also done a a lot for for, for Manchester United, but unfortunately, age has come in. There's nothing you can can do. He's not one of the fastest players. And when age comes in, uh, 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 it slows you down. Yes. Age has slowed him down. And... um, He's decided to, 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 to leave um, to exit uh, when uh, he's still uh, being respected. Yes. Because sometimes when you overstay, uh, you lose that respect because uh, the young kids will mm. run circles around you. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he's experienced that. And uh, I, I'm, I'm fully, he's been a good soldier for Manchester United. He's yes. been a good soldier for, for, for Chelsea. He, he's been a good addition in the Premier League. Uh, uh, he's, he's given us good memories. I remember his goal against Crystal Palace, against <laughs> Manchester United, yes. when we won 3-2. Brilliant goal. And uh, when everybody was shouting at him, don't shoot, don't shoot, he took the shot and won the game. Well, All the best to him. Any good memories for you for... Nemanja Matic? Yes, he's been remember. like the Luka Modric of the English Premier League at some point or the other. He's played very, very well. Yeah. Brilliant football. 
mm-hmm. brilliant thinker, brilliant to react yes. to situations, and he's also had that third eye that mm-hmm. only genius footballers have. He's able to spot a non-existent space and squeeze the ball right there like passing a camel through a needle hole. And he's done it without flinching. Yeah. So I have maximum respect for him, but times have brought in new players and mm. Matic has been MIA, he's been missing in action. Yes. He's only brought in when United feel that they are a bit desperate and he can't rekindle that magic of your. So maybe he might be able to go to a not so demanding space where he can play his football in its final lap. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't rule that out because he's, he's got something extra that he can pass on to younger guys, but not yes. at Manchester United. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm honoured to have analyzed soccer at a time when he was playing, and I wish him the very best of luck. Well, Nemanja Matic has actually, is going to leave Manchester United at the end of the season. But now also, one coach who was also sacked yesterday has got to be Sean Dutch, the Burnley manager. For many fans who follow Burnley and also the Premier League, it seems to be a sad day for us as uh, Burnley decided to do away with the Sean Dyke. What were they thinking? I just Good asked question. you off camera. What yes. were they thinking? Yeah. Because with the kind of budget that they have yeah. and what Sean Dyke has been able to offer them, who else will offer better? <laughs> yes. That is, that, that is my biggest question, especially at this time of the season. They could have waited for him to, to, to see out the season. Yeah. Because uh, remember he had really come in with a comeback and uh, he had uh, picked a few points in the, in the, in the last uh, few games. Yes. Uh, they could have allowed him, they could have allowed him to, to finish the season. Uh, he could have still maintained, uh, he, could, he could have avoided relegation with them. Yeah. But now I am not quite sure. Well, for Sean Dyke, he was actually one of the longest running Premier yes, League Premier managers. Coaches, yes. And actually today yes. he was actually one of the Longest running Premier. He was appointed, I think, back in 2012. Yes, October 2012. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has done eight years at Burnley, and they had actually promoted them from the championship twice. Got them, I think, into also the European places in one of his seasons. This was not a good season for him, only winning four matches so far. But he will not now be with Burnley, and we'll see how Burnley will be faring on, considering that in late kickoff today they'll be playing against the Hamas. So expect three points for West Ham. <laughs> for free. So we are putting money somewhere. <laughs> eight seasons. That's eight seasons. That's a long time. Yeah, a long time. Yeah, now now uh, maybe uh, the players can play for him now. That's yeah. when the players come in to fight for you. Yes. And there's football politics. Unfortunately, mm. it happens in England. You saw it with Sheffield United. But they, they had that kind of thing uh, whereby they don't invest so much in the team yeah. and they expect the coach to do wonders. And he has his requests to them, these are not honored, then they sack him. It's most unfortunate. They, with, the, with football, uh, actually, it's a business. And with this business, they, there has to be an understanding between the playing unit and the office. Yes, and the, the marketing, yeah, marketing and, yeah, and the Yeah, the business was of the company yeah, yeah, yeah. and the playing unit yes, yes, yes. of the company. See, if there's a disconnect, yes. uh, especially if you look at uh, a team like Manchester United, yeah. uh, when Ferguson left, yes. now the playing unit and, uh, and uh, the marketing bit or the administrative bit, yes. there's a big, over, a big disconnect. Yes. Because the playing unit, it means the manager mm. and the players. And, and the manager is the boss. And the manager is the boss. Mm. Because uh, uh, when the manager is in control, then the team will perform well. Yes. Uh, but when the manager is in not in control, mm. then the team is not likely to perform well because yeah. they will end up buying players that the manager doesn't need. Uh, they'll buy players for commercial business. And you see, that one uh, becomes a problem. And uh, that is what has happened with Manchester United. And uh, uh, as we were saying off camera, if you read, find that Ten Hag insisted that he has to be in control of the team. Yes. And what is that? What, 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 why that? Because when you have people who have played football, people who know how to market football in the administrative office, yes. look at the working relationship of Van der Sar and Ten Hag. Yes. Van der Sar has been there, has been a player. He knows the challenges that the players go through. So when he's there as, as, as the CEO or the football director, and then you have now a coach who understands mm. football, who has a philosophy, yes. the team definitely, uh, the team uh, uh, 
will go places but if that understanding is not there yeah then we have uh, it's actually go, good that you have brought in ten hag into this conversation because that now he has agreed to be the next manchester united manager in principle but they have not signed the contract yet but the question will be is he a good fit for manchester united at the moment he's definitely not the worst they could have got yes and maybe not the best they could have got given the time they had to sort this out yes remember there was a point when antonio conte was out of management and look what he's done at tottenham mm -hmm. he perhaps would have been a better purchase but then again when you look at the way ajax of amsterdam play yes that brilliant attacking football beautiful football what they call in england the manchester united way mm -hmm. you think okay this guy is worth the bet but then again we've seen more brilliant managers than him come in louis van Hal and so on and so forth it's all about will he be given the time and space mm -hmm. to do as he pleases. and the resources and the resources because at the end of the day if you don't give the manager that room to maneuver and do as he deems best, then you're going to have the kind of clash we've seen between Burnley and Sean Dyche. However, in terms of philosophy and tactics and everything, I think he's a good fit. Yes. Better than Mourinho was. Because Mourinho, a fantastic coach, but his kind of soccer did not blend with the kind of Manchester, foot, Manchester United way of playing football. Mourinho wants to park the bus, Manchester United other side that's built on attack ever since back in the day ten hag if ten hag finally manages to come to manchester united and is going to kick off the season as the coach let's say he goes also for pre-season and everything as a manchester united fan and diehard what do you expect from this coach uh, one I, ex I expect him to rebuild the team yes because that is what the team needs uh, we need a coach uh, tell as i said uh, uh, he is not the best that they could have gotten but it's the best that is out there mm. because if you look at Conte yes. uh, there are so many factors to consider longevity yes uh, Conte is a coach will come in win a season and decide he's not gonna do it again he's mm -hmm. leaving yes he did that at Chelsea he did that at Inter Milan he left Inter Milan when nobody expected so Manchester United I think they have learned from their mistakes yes they want to bring in a coach for the sake of longevity uh, definitely he's going to get the resources because Manchester United, even the previous coaches have gotten the resources mm -hmm. as compared to the, to the others if you look at the spending spree. Yes. The only issue is now him being able to get rid of the many dead woods that are there because mm -hmm. there are so many. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how the likes of Phil Jones, two years, two years you've played six games and wow. you're still in the team. You see, we, we need a coach who has to say, okay, good. Uh, uh, you did your best, but it's now time to move on. And uh, what I have read about him is yes. that kind of a coach. Either you are with me or, or you are not, not with me. Either yes. you shape up or mm. ship out. And that's what he did. And you look at all the successful coaches. They are that strong. You have to put your foot down. And do, 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 do you see this scenario also coming in uh, where uh, I was uh, just perusing through the internet and one of the things that came up was that... Uh, Manchester United is prepared to offer Paul Pogba 500,000 pounds per week. And as a coach now, you need to come to a realization that if I don't take care of this cup of the players, they are going to overrun me as a coach. Uh, to, to, to me, uh, I think I was really, really disappointed uh, yeah. with, those, with the news, if they are true. With those figures. Yes, with those figures. If because, true. One, yeah. Paul Pogba has no commitment to Manchester United whatsoever. Thank you. He has no consistency in his performance. Talent yeah. aside, we've had talented players, but without consistency, without hard work, then you are a liability to the team. Yes. And you've seen some games where he's really a liability to the team. When he gets a red card, when he was not supposed to get a red card, when he doesn't track back. So I think... Uh, we, as Manchester United, uh, we don't need such kind of players. Yes. We need players who love the club. Mm -hmm. Players who are willing to play for the manager. Yeah. Not players who, will, who, who want to dance on TikTok, who want to dance <laughs> on Instagram. And also, uh, that thing of model. splashing money on players. Yes. That era has passed. L l let him go. Yeah, that era let has passed. They splashed so much on Maguire. 
Look at Maguire. <laughs> what has he given them back in return? Yeah. There was a time they even the return on so investment much. is not worth yes, it. Yes, 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 yes. And you see, Paul Pogba <laughs> is also in his late twenties. If 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 you are investing in a twenty-one old, if they were investing in Sancho, there's yeah. hope that this kid, as time goes by, by the time he hits twenty-five, he will be at his peak. Paul Pogba is pa- is now getting past his peak. Because yes. if you are in your late twenties and you are a midfielder uh, and you are slow in nature, yes. you may not play for long. And you see, everybody and everybody I argue about Paul Pogba keeps on telling me, look yes. at his performance in France. Now, my issue is, look at the people he plays with in the French midfield. We cannot just attribute mm. it to Paul Pogba. He has N'Golo Kante alongside. He had Blues Bl- Matuidi for a yes. long time. Those are donkey. We will do the donkey work for him. Mm. He will. He has that. I don't refuse. He has that brilliant touch. The likes of Koundé. Even Koundé. Chaka exactly. for France. Yeah. Yes, Very he, he had that Chaka. brilliant touch. Yes. But... Luka Modric has a brilliant touch. And Luka Modric will still fly into t- tackles at the 120th minute. Will yes. Paul Pogba do that? That's when he will never be that great. <laughs> Big <laughs> question for Manchester United. No, we sorry, are going to sorry, be asking I, I them. Sorry, I said Chaka for France. Sorry, mm. I'm confused. I'm, my head's gone over. Yeah. All over the place. Mm. Sorry, Chaka is Swiss. <laughs> Just ignore me. <laughs> we'll still talk about many things here on the touchline. Uh, Manchester United is a big conversation. They like giving out points and you saw they gave out points to Everton. They have been giving out points to Burnley and all that. And they might end up giving points again this evening to Norwich. Norwich. We've had stupid draws, <laughs> what I call them. Uh, here, uh, it gets for me, when you yeah. talk about Manchester United, it gets very emotional because yeah. <laughs> it's one club I love. Yeah. We, ha- we, we have stupid draws that Manchester United is drawing against teams that they should not draw. Yes. And I watched, uh, actually, th- that time I was watching, uh, I know Jose and I, if you're watching, mm-hmm. we, we, we caught the game last season, last time with him. Against Leicester. Against, against uh, Everton. Everton, yeah. And uh, one thing, we were coming to a conclusion that this is just a, like a, a Kenya Premier League game. Because both wow. teams could not string together five passes. Mm-hmm. That's a joke. You don't expect yes. that from Manchester United. In mm-hmm. fact, Manchester United, the last two games have been worse than a Kenya Premier League team because at least the Kenya Premier League team, you can uh, blame... FC, uh, FC is knocking uh, balls that by the FC is playing yes. brilliant football. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. I, I, I was One, in Tika the other day. Passes. Yeah. And uh, they, oh, they are playing yeah. brilliant So uh, Man U have been as down as down can be, to be honest. Yeah. 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 And this really afternoon really against down. Norwich, you give them a chance to garner their three points. This is their best chance to ever come back yeah. um, and, and gunner three points because really it's not too much of an uphill task when yes. you're playing against Norwich. Mm-hmm. But then again, Norwich have nothing to lose. So they're coming to throw wind to caution. Yes. And, or is it throw caution to the wind? Sorry, they're th- coming to throw whatever it is. Norwich are coming out with nothing, no care in the world. Mm-hmm. However, if United were ever to get some three easy points, no disrespect to Norwich, this is it. If they can't, I wouldn't be surprised. They don't win this one. I think uh, they, w- they won't even make it to the yeah. Europa. Yes. Uh, because now the Champions League spot is out of question. Eh? Yeah. Because uh, you have uh, Liverpool and Man City number one and two is gone. Chelsea. And then Chelsea number three is also, may also yeah. go. Uh, and then uh, we talk about Tottenham. Uh, is is making Tottenham strides. Arsenal. Tottenham is making strides to seal the number four spot. Yeah. So if Tottenham seals number four, and uh, number five you have Arsenal, number six you have. Uh, uh, now we are fighting uh, West with Ham. West Ham, and uh, and Wolves is just there. So yes. If they lose today, uh, Wolves and Arsenal and 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 West Ham will occupy six and seven. Well, those are some, that's a match that will be coming for Manchester United this afternoon. But also talking about. Uh, Tottenham will be going ahead against Brighton. Brighton have also been playing good football this time round. But since Antonio Conte came in, started off with two, three matches not going his way. But of late, Tottenham is scoring goals. Harry Kane and Son, they are still scoring good goals. I think Conte has brought in, brought them to the form they were in when they were playing for Mourinho. Remember uh-huh. when Son and Kane were playing for Mourinho, they were banging goals at will. Because Mourinho uh, assisted Ken to have something to track mm. back and come yes. into the number 10 position and create for Son. And that confuses many teams. Mm. And that's what Conte has now. If you look at the last game, Son banged three. Yes. Two assists from Ken. So you see, Ken now is, pro- is turning out to be the provider. Yes. When everybody is expecting him to stick forward, to be provided for. 
and that confuses most of the defenders because most of the defenders they do man to man marking when you told stay with Ken now when he draws you back towards the midfield you create a hole and sun comes in and this is Tottenham's time to run away with it because exactly. Liverpool uh, sorry Arsenal slipped mm -hmm. and Manchester United slipped yes West Ham sort of slipped so really this is Tottenham's time not to bottle it but to run away with it yeah. if they do so then they start to seal their their fourth place finish this particular league or uh, this particular season for that matter but if they sleep because there are times in the season when they've lacked consistency in matters winning then they'll give these other teams that are chasing them a lifeline and that won't be good for them yeah so really it's it's tottenham's big test this particular weekend well tottenham will be starting off the early kick off there at 3 30 actually against the brighton half and then uh, we talk about manchester united and norwich in the goal rush there manchester united versus norwich then southampton at the saint mary's versus arsenal watford will be playing home to brentford and then newcastle as in james park will be playing leicester city and then we'll be finishing off the day with west ham versus burnley the game between southampton and arsenal actually looks like a big test for arsenal because yeah yeah a big test Arsenal, it doesn't look like a coach southampton has been a very good team since Arsenal took over yeah yeah and southampton again they have to come back from the six the the, 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 the thrashing they got against chelsea uh, yes. last last weekend they were thrashed six so they, they, they have to answer they have to give a, a, an answer to that eh? uh so today uh, uh it's gonna be they, they have to, they will come up uh, really hard against Arsenal. So it's it's an interesting and tough game to watch. Well, and then for you, Arsenal, Southampton, I, how do you point? I give Arsenal benefit of the doubt. I think they I stand a the chance. Is. Yes, I think they stand a chance of just walking away with it or at least not losing yeah. because they can't do worse than they've been doing of late. Yes. It's, this is it for them. If they want to finish top top four this is it for them but then again it's not going to come easy and it's got i think it will come late in the game for them well one team that has also uh, has also sorry impressed uh, since they appointed their new coach has got to be newcastle with eddie howe and they will be playing against leicester city a big game for eddie howe at home for newcastle to play leicester Yes, 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 yes. A big game, and you, you look at uh, as you've said since Eddie Howe came in, he he's really done a brilliant job. Apart from the the, the, the five nil, the five one, I think he was hit by by Tottenham. Uh, uh, he's done a, a brilliant job. Yes. Uh, throughout and uh, uh, he he's in the process of rebuilding. Yes. And uh, at least he's given Newcastle hope that they are not going for relegation. Yes. They will stay up. But uh, uh, even before we talk about any other game, my, my credit, my big credit goes to Christian Eriksen at Brentford. Uh -huh. uh, yes. It's, it's just brilliant for football. And even yes. after, after, after that uh, near-death experience, experience, he's come back, he's stronger. And uh, I, I've watched him for the last three games. He's uh, come back to his best. He's pulling the strings. He's mantle Chelsea. And, and Brentford dismantled haven't Chelsea. lost an English Premier League game with him. With him yes. as, as, pa uh, as part of the squad outfield. And now Tottenham even want to buy him again. <laughs> uh, must have been. Uh, it must have been a lot of uh, therapy. Therapy. and the heart yes. from Christian, yes. from the innermost heart of yourself oh, yes. that he has to the put desire. it yeah the desire yes, he has yes, yes. and the love of the game yes. to come back and play because i think uh, there, there are some players who have had this heart problem even the, the italians refused play. he cannot play in their league yeah. Yeah, yeah it's the realization that mm. he's got a new lease of life yes he's living a second chance yeah but life even if, if, even when that realization you know, when somebody realizes I have a new lease, mm. somebody will want to be cautious and not even you see the game. You, you see there's a uh, mm. it's like canon wanko coming yes. back from the yes. heart yes. operation and near-death experience or ronaldo the brazilian number nine coming back from his knee surgery yes. and with stitches right from the shin all the way almost to the thigh it's that thing of, I can't take this for granted. I'm so blessed. 
I'm going to give this my all. You but know, it is scary. Yes. It, it is scary for some some people like us. Mm. For for me personally, it's scary because uh, we saw what happened. I think it was Fabrice Mwamba. Fabrice yes. Mwamba. Yeah, for yes. Mark Vivian for Mark going. Vivian yeah. Going. yeah. yeah. And uh, then their, their coaches. I think some Allardyce and Sir Alex Ferguson yes. have got these uh, hard pacemaker. mm. pacemakers. pacemakers. Yeah. And when they celebrate a goal, you're like. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this the, yeah, yeah. the game against the yes. game against Barcelona versus yeah. Manchester United for yeah. the arm was here and it was shaking and yes. it was shaking and yes. he was trying to hold it and he can't do it, you know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and you're like, hey, it's the, also it's not to diminish his previous career before the incident at the last Euros. Yes. Ericsson has been a brilliant Oh yes, he has. Yes. He's yes. always given everything. But this time around, it's like there's a rebirth, there's something that's really calling him to the next level yeah yeah, yeah. and, 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 and we are saying it takes a lot of courage uh, to, to come back and mm. say i want to play again mm. others will go into retirement and mm. go move slowly into coaching yes but this guy came back and say i want to play again so and I, I want to play the highest level let's finish off with <laughs> west ham and uh, burnley three points for west ham i, I conquer <laughs> 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 for you tyras <laughs> it's theirs for the taking that's so and, and and let me <laughs> pass on my congratulations to Ayub Tinde Masika. Remember, he yes. won the Revo Thai League. Uh -huh. Yes. Won mm -hmm. last Sunday. Yes. And with Buriram United. So now they are the champions of Thailand. Mm -hmm. They may have booked themselves a place in the Asian Cup for next season. Mm -hmm. Massive congratulations to him. I didn't want that to be my highlight of the week because I didn't want to sound a bit selfish or biased. <laughs> but... Overall, massive congratulations to him. Yes. Another comeback. Talking of comebacks, mm -hmm. he's a guy who was clubless just the other day, but he came in strong. He remained physically and mentally fit. And guess what? Today he was back in the gym this morning, focusing and everything, just as he's been most of the week. Imagine you win the league and you should be out there partying and drinking, but you're out there hitting the gym hard. So massive congratulations to him. Thank you for flying yeah, our flag high. Give uh, us your parting shot. My parting shot is to, to, to one Jao. Uh, uh, he won uh, the featherweight in the boxing uh, uh, championship or any that has been going on in DRC Congo. Yes. This is a boy who, who, who has come from so far. Mm -hmm. He joined the military by, 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 by mistake. Yes. And uh, credit goes to, to his coach and uh, uh, coach Deori. Yes. Uh, all the way to in Gidurai has done a brilliant job with his kids. Yeah. And he's still mentoring other kids. And uh, they are the junior championship. Mm -hmm. He took kids there. You know, when, 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 when we have people doing extraordinary things yes. uh, in the estates these are kids who who are turned from the streets they mm -hmm. come in here he rehabilitates them and they also won with uh there's another kid go called monena is in grade six mm -hmm. won uh the the, the champion the the, the the youth championship that has been going on yes one and there's another chi girl called Li elizabeth they have done well those are my heroes njau coach deuri all the way from gidurai keep doing what you're doing thank you well, thanks a lot eric also for coming Thanks a lot to us. I'm Robert Osoro. For everyone who has made this broadcast a success, we say Asante Sana. Good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your viewing. Just make sure West Ham has three points for you against Burnley. <laughs>